I'd like to talk about migration. I'd like to talk about migration of grazing animals, and I'd like to talk about transhumans, the migration of humans with these grazing animals. So the growth conditions of plants very much depends upon the rainfall and the temperature. And so if there's patches of rainfall, then there can be much lusher conditions uh, and much better conditions for animals to move to. And so large grazing animals such as ungulates uh, can walk between one area to another so they can undertake quite large movement patterns. And there's a distinction between nomadism and nomadism is moving between one patch and another and migration where you move seasonally between one area and another area. And normally uh, both occur together. So there's some classic examples of dramatic migration systems. Think of the wildebeest in East Africa. Think of the caribou in the Arctic. Think of what the bison used to be like in North America. And I'm here in Mongolia, where there's another of these migration systems that I'm admiring. There's um, a group of Mongolian gazelles out there. You can't see them, I'm sure. Um, but these Mongolian gazelles will move seasonally about a thousand kilometers uh, in order to find better uh, grazing conditions, better climatic conditions. So the key thing here is for these migration systems to persist, they need to have no barriers to movement and that is a problem for almost all of these migration systems. Uh, here in Mongolia, uh, the main barrier is the creation of the Ulaanbaatar to Beijing railway line that has fences along it uh, so animals cannot cross. But in most parts of the world, there's fencing, particularly for farming, that hinders that migration system. So it is one of the spectacles of the natural world, but is often disappearing because of barriers being put in the way. So what are transhumans? The human movement associated with grazing animals. Uh, let's go and look at that now. So what about transhumans, the movement of animals and people from one area to another? I'm here with Pakaku, who's um, um, a herder who's herded horses throughout his life. So tell me what the, the migration pattern used to be like. I've been moving with the herd since around 1955 to 1956, when I was about five years old, so I only know it partly. So, so how far did you used to go? At that time in Mongolia, our livestock numbers were smaller, so we moved only about 60 kilometers. And, and sometimes you say you went up to 600 kilometers, I gather. Later, we would travel 250 to 300 kilometers in one direction. And in the last seven or eight years, we've been moving as far as 500 to 6 kilometers in one site. So what was it like? You, you packed everything up. You packed up your gear. How did you pack up your gear? We Mongolians are nomadic people. So from nature itself, we learned this from how to treat the homes and respect the nature too. The most important thing is duration and distance, how long to stay, where to go, when to move. Only with careful planning can you protect your livestock. That is how you prepare for wintering and spring pastures. Before you move, you must always calculate everything. So it's all carefully worked out. And then, and then you pack up your gear and put them on camels, is that right? So how many camels? That is correct. In the old days, a small gear could be carried by three camels. Now, a larger one would need five camels. And, and how has that changed? Today, it depends on the weather. Some years the pasture is good, some years there is drought. To keep your animals safe through winter, you must bring them to where the pastures are rich. That is the true skill of a herder. 
By following the laws of nature, sometimes we must travel far, sometimes not so far. The, the Mongol Empire is famous for being huge, the size of Africa, going from Hungary to China. And it seems that that, that was possible because there was steppe habitat all the way along and that you were mobile people who would move, particularly in times of drought, you would move out. Um, and also that the evolution of the, the, the saddle and the stirrup meant that you could fight, you could rise up and then you could use your lance to be fierce fighters. Is that your understanding? Is that, how do you understand the, the origin? In a did came out of a sunk home to Trusmoto. The sensor or tar who did know in Hungry Uncle Humboldt. I think God created us at the top of the golden world. Therefore, from ancient times, humanity survived by taming animals to live alongside us. In this nomadic lifestyle, in order to survive, you have to communicate. Even though we don't speak its language, we as nomads gave understanding to the animals and made them part of our lives from the knowledge we have built all these years. The horses are fabulously beautiful and thank you for your hospitality and thank you for explaining uh, how this system works. I've learned a lot from that. Thank you. I wish you a long life and happiness and may you pass on the true wisdom of humanity to future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.